I wanted to share today for two reasons. First, because I love Reverend Marlene, and we've developed a, a closer friendship over the last few months, especially around the topic of grief. And secondly, because yesterday was my birthday, and I'm oh. celebrating all of you. bitter or better. And that's one of my favorite <laughs> topics because it was made important to me on several occasions. And, but I'm only going to talk about one of them because otherwise we'll be here all day. There is a quote from one of my spiritual mentors, Martin Luther King. As my sufferings mounted, I soon realized that there were two ways in which I could respond to, in, to my situation. Either to react with bitterness or seek to transform the suffering into a creative force. I decided to follow the latter course. Major event of my life happened 28 years ago, October 22nd, which was just a few weeks ago. I was driving in Washington, D.C., going to get a contract signed, and my mother was visiting me for one day. We were hit by two cars. A speeding driver jumped the median strip. And, um, but you know, my mother was spiritually ready. She had talked about angels two days before the crash. We, she asked me the name of my angel. She said she was sort of ready to go home and to her spiritual home. And she was really just so like tied into that. Like she just was so convinced and I completely blew that off because I thought, you know, I wasn't awake then. I wasn't awake to spiritual principles. I wasn't awake to my own divinity. I wasn't awake to anything, really. Um, they talk about going through life blind. I had blinders on, really. Um, the bitter part of the experience was the guy that hit us, got off completely, got four points, um, did not go to jail. The other greater part of the situation was that some family members had gone to her house and taken her jewelry while I was in the hospital for a week and in a wheelchair. Um, the justice system failed our family. You know, I felt at the time betrayed by my family. You know, those things all happen when we lose someone. Weird stuff happens in the family. So I've, I've gotten over that and forgiven the people involved, including the man that hit us, because this isn't in my notes, but forgiveness is not for the other person. Right? It's for us. Because it's if we hold any hatred or hurt, it's it's like the poison we drink. It doesn't affect them. The better part of the story um, was that that was a big wake up call for me. That was a big spiritual wake up call. I was spared for a reason, my life had purpose. And you know, it jolted me into an awareness like, why am I still here? What's the meaning of life? And you know, because I was recuperating on the couch for several weeks, I was watching a lot of Oprah, and I was exposed to Eckhart Tolle and the power of now. And I learned to help myself and others deal with grief through an art form called mosaics. And I was given a creative gift from my higher power to tell the stories of mothers through their jewelry and of grandmothers and people we've loved who've lost. So I brought a piece today I made this recently. It's called Live, Laugh, Love. And I wanted to bring it because it's an affirmation that we can all practice. And I wrote this little poem. It wasn't supposed to be a poem. It just came out that way. Live like today is your last day. Live like today is the last day of your loved one's life. Live like there's no tomorrow. As tomorrow is not a guarantee for any of us. Laugh like no one is watching. Laugh, sorry. Laugh like no one knows your pain. Laugh like there is only joy. Love like you are a child of God. Love like you have the key to happiness. And love like there is only bright colors in your world. And this mosaic, as you'll see up close later, has a shamrock for love, has a rose, has even little Minnie Mouse. 
a dice. <laughs> and the frog down here, I don't know if you know the acronym for frog, R-O-G, stands for fully rely on God. And I, I love that acronym. The last thing I just want to say is that whatever has made you hurt in the past, the broken pieces can be transformed into a thing of beauty. Like the Japanese art form called Kintsugi, where they repair, where they repair broken teacups with gold. The reconstructed pieces are considered more beautiful and valuable than before the break because they're brokenness and restoration. Many things in my life could have broke me, but instead, through my faith, I have been transformed and restored. So find your support systems and the people that say yes to your ideas and dreams, and my wish for you is to live, laugh, and love.